what the heck is tone mapping? How do we use it in our Mozilla Hub scenes? And what's the reward at the end of this video? This video was requested from a comment I got from Sage Freeman. And if you don't follow Sage Freeman on Twitter, you probably should. He's got a lot of really great tweets that are Metaverse, Web, VR, and XR related. So what is tone mapping? Well, it has to do with three things. How physical light is calculated, how our eyes perceive physical light, and the limitations of our display devices like monitors, projector screens, cell phones, this type of thing. Anything with a screen that displays pixels. So the way Blender and other 3D software calculates the light intensity is in a linear way, which means that if I have a power of 1000 watts and I double it to 2000 watts, it's going to be twice as bright. Now that makes sense, except for that's not actually how our eyes perceive light and thus that's not how our display devices are optimized to display light. Our eyes actually give more importance to the middle of the curve, right? So our, our perception of what brightness is, is non-linear. Our display devices are extremely limited in the range of brightness that they can display. So if I have an image of a flashlight pointing at the camera, it's not actually as bright as a real flashlight. My monitor can only be so bright. So tone mapping takes the linear values calculated by Blender and transforms them so our display devices show more of the values that our eyes naturally prioritize and less of the values that we have trouble distinguishing between anyway. So in summary, light is calculated physically. Our display devices can't show the full range of that calculation. And our eyes care about more values than others. So we tone map the linear values into values that are in line with what our eyes perceive inside the range of the display devices. If we want to set up tone mapping for hubs, we can go over to the scene properties tab, which is this little cone and sphere and dot. We can go down to the hubs menu here, click add component and add an environment settings component. This will allow us to change the default tone mapping setting, as well as having some exposure and environment map settings. There are five different presets loaded in, and I'll walk you through what each one of them does on the 3JS website. The 3JS website actually has a really cool example scene, and you can go to 3JS.org and click on examples and just type in tone mapping to see it. By default, the tone mapping is set to none. And that means that the display values are the same as the physical calculation values. But if we just go over here to the top right and we change that to say ACES Filmic, you'll see that even though the physical calculation hasn't changed at all, the display values have into this higher contrast, more saturated, more cinematic look. And the reason why ACES Filmic is a cinematic look is because ACES was actually developed for visual effects. So this is a tone mapping very often used in visual effects movies. There are many. You'll notice that there isn't a difference between linear and none. They look exactly the same, other than we have an exposure slider here, which changes the brightness of the HDRI. Just going to set that back to one. And there are a few different tone mapping presets that we can check out. Cineon, which looks pretty slick. Aces Filmic, which is, again, just a little bit, very similar, but a little bit darker. And Reinhard, which I've never used before. I'm not exactly sure what it's good for. And of course, Linear and None are the same. And there's also a custom one which this custom one Mozilla Hubs is using as Blender Filmic, which is Blender's tone mapping default for cycles. So if you do have your tone mapping set to Blender Filmic, then you're increasing the odds that your Hubs render will match your render from Blender cycles. The way you do that is super easy. All you got to do is just set which tone mapping preset you think looks the nicest for your hub scene. And all of a sudden you're going to have much more cinematic looking Mozilla hub scenes. You can also change the exposure, which is going to be the overall brightness, which you can see me demonstrate here, right? You notice that these are 32 bit texture images. So as I decrease the exposure, we're actually revealing more of the data into the display space. If you'd like to know the difference between eight, 16 and 32 bit textures, Drop me a comment and you know I'll make a video about it.
However, I would caution you using the exposure slider as a way to change the overall lighting because it will affect all of your texture colors and any branding colors that you have in your scene. So it's often better just to increase the lighting intensity or decrease the lighting intensity to change those values and only use the exposure slider if you really need to fine tune and tweak it. It can create overly exposed or underexposed scenes just like your exposure does in photography. It should also be known that this video is sponsored by utopiavr.com. utopiavr.com has new products up and they have some pretty sweet subscription services. If you go to their website and you just click over here on the pricing tab, you can see that they have a few different packages available to you where you can have five rooms with seven environment packs and five participant slots all the way up to 10 rooms and even 20 rooms. They are constantly adding to their environment database so you can sign up to this company and have access to all of their different rooms for meetings, hangouts, community sessions, whatever it is you want. So check this out. There's an affiliate link below that if you click on, it helps support me as well. Thank you so much for watching this whole video. And as a reward, here's some silly putty I'm going to stretch in front of the camera. Aren't you glad you stayed? Hold on, let me get this in focus. If you made it to the end, comment the color of the silly putty and I'll know that you made it to the end.